It's just flat out depressing. It's tragic. It's outrageous at points. And our heart goes out to all the families on both sides of the conflict between Israel and Palestinian Hamas terrorists. And please, let me explain what I mean by my heart goes out to them. I would be thrilled if every Hamas terrorist was converted or killed. The end. The end. If they came to their senses, came to Jesus Christ, abandoned the false religion of Islam, abandoned the murderous sword of Muhammad, and they came to Christianity, I would be thrilled. There's room at the cross for thee. But for those who are bent, hell-bent, on murdering Christians, murdering Jews, killing civilians, then all I can do is wish the Israeli military forces the best as they move in to try and crush them. And by the way, I also hope that every Israeli soldier comes to faith in Christ for their eternal soul's sake, for their eternal salvation. Again, there is room at the cross for thee. All right, let's take a look at this. Just obviously you know the news and I'm gonna give you a takeaway at the end, but in case you missed any of it, three Israeli teenagers, all of them were students at a Jewish seminary. They were abducted and they were murdered. The Israeli government blames Hamas for doing it. And Hamas has been firing rockets, dozens, scores of rockets into Israel into civilian areas to kill civilians. In addition to that, the terrorists have dug holes underground from the Gaza Strip into Israel so that they can come into Israel to launch terrorist attacks on foot in, in person. Now, I want you to take a look at the Gaza Strip on this map. It's 139 square miles, okay? It's about 30 miles north to south, between 6 and 10 miles east to west. I mean, it's probably a lot smaller than the area of your town where you live, okay? It's just not a lot of real estate. It was won in war by Israel from the Egyptians in the 1967 war. And about nine years ago, I believe it was 2005, the Israelis gave it over to the Palestinian Authority to control it. And it has become a, uh, a hotbed, a breeding ground, a hot house for Muslim terrorists. And these terrorists refuse to acknowledge Israel's right to exist. They have spurned ceasefires over the last few days. And uh, as of this filming, there are well over 500 Palestinians dead. Nearly 20 Israeli soldiers have been killed. This is the fiercest fighting in that region in at least a decade. But the, the Israeli defense is determined to destroy every tunnel that it can get its hands on and to kill as many terrorists as possible. And they have the right to do it, all right? The tragedy, and of course, John... Uh, Kerry, our Secretary of State, got in trouble for saying it's a hell of a pinpoint. Uh, the problem is, is that Hamas bases its activity oftentimes from inside homes. Now, I'm going to show you this video. It's, it's horrific to watch, but you'll see plumes of smoke coming out of the house where the terrorists are firing on Israeli soldiers, and then, or two houses actually, and then the Israeli military just takes them out. Watch the video. So, 
when you <laughs> when you fire from a home and then your home gets hit, if there are women, if there are children in the home, then they're going to be killed. And I want to I want to say one other thing that's very interesting about Israel is they actually will tell the people in the neighborhoods where they're going to strike. They will let them know. They'll send them text messages. They'll make phone calls to them. They'll drop leaflets and say to them, "In this area is going to be under attack very shortly. We urge you to leave if you don't want to be harmed." Okay. So, as Americans, we really try to not kill women and children on our airstrikes or drone strikes. We've been very unsuccessful at that at times. We try to follow the rule of just war to not kill non-combatants, old men, old women, small children. Sometimes there are casualties in war that are called collateral damage, all right? And that is a large part of what's going on here. And Hamas knows that their women and children are in danger and they keep fighting because they want Israel to have bad press. They think it's going to help their cause at the United Nations with world opinion if Israel kills a lot of women and children. So these terrorists are willing to sacrifice women and children for their political goals. I'll say this and we'll move on to the next topic. And that is, it's really hard to negotiate with someone it's really hard to have peace with someone who's committed to your death and to your destruction. And that's what we have with Hamas regarding Israel. The members of Hamas, these Muslim terrorists, devout followers of Muhammad and the religion of Islam, they are committed to the death of Jews and to the destruction of the state of Israel. How do you negotiate with that? You can't. You have to extinguish it. I'll be right back.